beautiful warm day today, very windy. And I'm sitting in Ariel's enclosure and you can see Ariel and Matilda behind me. The reason I'm in here is because we have a new arrival and her name is Charlene. Now Charlene, I'm just sitting in here because I'm giving her a try in this enclosure. Charlene is a very little a bantam hen so I don't want her to be in the main garden because she could be prey to cats and she's obviously I don't want to risk stressing out Ariel and Matilda so that's why I'm in here to make sure there's no biting but at the moment Charlene is very intent on having a dust bath I'll just show you okay here she is so we're down the end of the enclosure she's having a great time I've just given her a wash and um, yeah we gave her a bit of she had a dirty bottom so I gave her a wash just to ensure that she was uh, cleaned up and then we could see whether it, this was an ongoing issue that there was something causing the dirt or whether she's just from a dirty environment oh that's a really good dust bath darling <laughs> So introducing hens can always be a bit tricky. So I'm particularly looking out for Matilda, seeing that she's blind. I don't want anyone picking on her. And it is normal for there to be a bit of a pecking order. So let me tell you a bit about the rescue. So yesterday I got uh, an email from a, a man called Michael who had a hen, Charlene, turn up in his garden. And he didn't know what to do. He wanted the best for her, but he also didn't want her in the garden. So he... He said he didn't have a clue about hens, he didn't know what to do to care for her. So he called the RSPCA who said that they couldn't help because she was officially stray. She, he tried calling the council and they said, I think they said to take, try and take her to the vet, but he couldn't catch her anyway. And he was worried that a vet would kill her, like put her down. Um, and then he tried calling Pace Egg Farms, which is really concerning and I think it came from a really good place. I think that he probably has the idea that egg farms are idyllic places where chickens roam and have beautiful lives. Of course, it couldn't be further from the truth. Pace, for example, is an absolutely huge supplier of eggs and has disgusting factory farm conditions. Anyway, eventually the RSPCA referred him to us and I knew that this guy wouldn't be able to catch her so I thought I'll, I'll go over there and and so I did and I went with all my staff ready to ready for the wild goose chase that these chickens take us on but as it happens it was pretty much the easiest rescue ever she was sitting on a flower pot in his garden and it was dark so I didn't turn my light on and I could see her because she's gray and I went and I just grabbed her and she wasn't happy but it was nice easy rescue I gave her food and water straight away Michael hadn't been feeding her because he wanted to try and make it so someone could catch her, but it meant she was pretty hungry. Uh, but they were a very lovely couple. Like they really did seem to want the best, even though as they, in their own words, they were clueless about it. Um, they'd called her Charlene because they said she had a bit of Kylie Minogue about her, which is lovely, I think. And I told them I was a massive um, Kylie Minogue fan back in, in the eighties and you know, a massive neighbours fan to this day <laughs> so yeah so she came home and I gave her some I gave her a bit of a cuddle and she was pretty scared she you know she tucked herself behind my arm because she was scared of the big wide world she'd come into but she was safe and so I let, gave her last night to settle in and then today I had to put her in um, a coop at first because I didn't have anywhere to put her Another reason we need the hen haven. <laughs> and so she didn't have much space, but I, that's just whilst I, I was busy this morning. And then now I've got some time, I've just given her a bath. Um, and I'll just, I'll just show you what we did there. So we're just going to give Charlene a bit of a bath. She's had the night to settle in, so hopefully she won't be too worried by this. It's nice lukewarm. How oh, is that, sweetheart? She's got a bit of a messy bottom and it's kind of as if it's been like that for a while. So I'm just gonna, look, she's preening herself whilst I do it. Good girl. Just rinse the area first. 
first. I'll also worm her and check her for lice um, after this. She's being very good, very brave for such a little girl. The problem is she can't be rehomed or anything until we've checked that there's no other issues that are causing her dirty bottom. Um, it might be that she could have an egg related issue or something else going on inside or it could just be some kind of parasite. So we wet the area, don't be sweetheart, and I'm going to use a really gentle lush product, lovely snow fairy, to wash her gentle on human skin and animal skin and it's not tested on animals and it's vegan. Hey sweetie. I know she doesn't want it. She says this is not my idea of fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> Soak that area for you. I'm gonna have such a nice fluffy butt after this. She's gone about sick of this, she says. I know, I know. When Priscilla's here or one of the volunteers, I just get them to hold hold someone for me so that they don't worry as much as she's preening herself. There we go. Already going to be so much cleaner. You're going to smell like a snow fairy. Charlene, make sure we get it all off so it's not itchy. Okay. I'm not going to wet all of her because we don't want to stress her out. It's a lovely warm day today for her to dry off. I know, it's the last thing we want, isn't it? Let's see if that looks cleaner. There we go, it looks lovely and clean now. Squeeze that out. Here she is, look how small she is. <laughs> I've got, we've got so many towels here, if we get through so many. I'm going to wrap her in that. Good girl. And we'll give her a little bit of a dry off on the bot. There we go. Now if it's a colder day, I would blow dry her. But it's very warm today, it's about 30 degrees. I think it would be less stressful for her to go and dry off in her area. But I will use this chance to check her for any other issues. <laughs> like whilst I'm doing this she's preening my and I'll move a bit closer. There she is. What a darling. You're very brave. Aren't you? Okay. So I'm gonna get her. Now let's check her for any other issues. So I'm gonna have a look between her feathers and see if we've got any lice. Usually when the, when the light gets through, you'll see them running. No, you seem to be free of lice, which is good. Let's check that butt area for lice. She does have what look like some eggs. So it might be a good idea to give her a spray as well. And obviously we can't check her for worms, although they might be in her poop. But we'll worm her anyway, because that's just good practice. What about your feet? Oh, lovely. Nice, healthy feet. There she is, nice, healthy feet. Oh, darling. So we'll let her go and dry off and have something to eat and drink so she can de-stress for a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after I had towel dried her, it's a lovely warm day and windy, perfect for drying. I'm going to get through so much of our dirty animal towels today. Um, and so we've come outside and sure enough the wind has pretty much dried her already and now the key is to see will, will her bottom get messy again if it does that means there's probably something going on inside that we'll need to get a vet to check out so but if not it could just be that she was in a bit of a filthy environment before so now I've tried to bring her into this nice big enclosure you kind of can't see the whole thing here but it goes over this is this fence is kind of like just something that was in the garden it's not really part of the enclosure um, again, we can't take things down or build permanent enclosures. This is our most secure enclosure because these girls are the most um, vulnerable. And above me, we've got a tarp 
to keep the rain off. Um, again, it's not as good as if it was a permanent rain shelter. What have I got on my head? Some dirt, of course. And she seems to be having a great time. So if we have a look at her again, there she is. I, I don't think she'll let me come much closer. She doesn't mind me, but I think she's going to take a bit of getting used to me, which is fair enough. She's ever so pretty. Aren't you, darling? <laughs> yes, you are. She makes beautiful little sounds as well. Let's see how the others are doing. Up here, we've got Matilda wondering what's going on and Ariel having a snack. So they're not too bothered. But when Charlene first came in, she did give Matilda a peck, which was not nice. Um, only once and then she went off. Hello, Matilda. So Matilda was from the same place I told you about with Jen and Astrid, where the people were feeding live chickens to dogs. But with Matilda, she was blind as well. And the roosters and that, they kept mounting her and she didn't know what. She was just hiding under a coop the whole time. So now she's here and Ariel is her best friend. And yeah, they, they really get on so well. I don't want to disrupt them by adding someone else, but this is also a perfect enclosure for our little friend here. Aren't you, sweetie? Hey, aren't you gorgeous? <laughs> so we will see how she gets on over the coming days. She looks very content at the moment. She's just um, having the biggest, hugest dust bath in the world and she is safe in here. Um, it, I wouldn't trust it as far as the very little animals, but she's, because, you know, there might be a chance that a lizard or um, rats could still get in. But for her size, this is safe from cats, safe from hawks. But I, I honestly have such a great plan for what we could do for, for this enclosure in the new hen haven. I mean, firstly, having grass so that I mean, Ariel loves lying out on the grass. Ariel loves sunshine. We need better rain protection. Um, there's so much that we could do. We also see how there's all these roots here. Um, we can't get rid of them. We can't do anything permanent. But if we had our own property and there was something like that, we'd just get rid of them because they're not good as far. Other hens would just think it was great jungly environment. But for Ariel, she can get tangled in that. So it's not ideal. But um, they're so, so, oh, hello, you've come all the way here, have you? She does tend to follow voices and she's such a sweetie. I'm so glad she's safe. But yeah, so that was what I did last night. And I think just, it kind of just reminded me that we do need this hen haven for emergency situations. Uh, yes, this, this one's worked out really well with Charlene. Uh, she's doing great at the moment, but we get these calls all the time they're not always as easy for us to accommodate even now like if if charlene after her last bath does decide to pick on matilda like this enclosure is not going to work and then i'll have to think of something else so but at the moment it's looking good so fingers crossed um i hope you enjoyed meeting our gorgeous charlene and i will look forward to speaking to you tomorrow